Today I am doing a requested video. Hannah Costa had asked to see how I make cream soups. So today I am going to show you three very basic cream soup recipes. Now any of these three basic recipes that I'm going to show you, um, they're interchangeable. You know, you can use any of these three for anything that calls for cream soup. But what you see in front of you is different kinds of flavorings that you can add to make flavored cream soups. So the one that I use most often is um, cream of chicken soup. Um, okay, some people they'll take um, ground, ground sage along with, you know, chicken bouillon or chicken broth to make, to add to the basic cream soup in order to make chicken cream soup, cream of chicken. Okay, so that's one. Now, and then just pick whatever flavor you want to add. Okay, so for cream of chicken, um, I just add this um, chicken flavored soup base. This is Mrs. Miller's, no MSG. Um, anyway, this is what I use for my cream of chicken. And like I said, some people, since it's chicken, they'll use like, they'll add in a little bit of ground sage or poultry seasoning, but uh, I don't. But I just wanted to let you know that that's a, you know, you could add that. Um, the second, you can also add just beef bouillon. <clears throat> um, this is beef flavored soup base. So you can add this to make, you know, cream of beef soup. Um, Mrs. Miller's, she also makes uh, ham flavored, and I believe there's another flavor. Okay, you can add, this is another one that I do. Um, I add mushrooms. So after I make my base, I will cut up some mushrooms out of this can, pretty small, and add them to the soup. And then I will also pour some of the liquid into it to make my cream of mushroom soup. All right, you can also, some people like cream of onion. I, I think I don't, <laughs> but um, you know, you could add some onion, real onion or like this dry minced onion, um, but you need to um, re, re, what's the word, rehydrate it, you know, put it in a little bit of water, let it soak up the water before you actually add it to the soup. And then also cream of celery. Um, I just take some celery flakes, and once again, these are dried, so just like the onions, you need to add it to water for a few minutes and let them, you know, reconstitute themselves to come back to, you know, their full size and, uh, you know, flavor. And then you could also add some whole celery seed if you wanted. And some people, whenever they make cream of celery soup, they also add some onion. I don't. The ones that I make most often is the, I use celery flakes. When I make cream of celery soup, I make cream of mushroom soup, and then I make cream of chicken. And I don't... last one that you can add to make your own flavored cream soup is just some cheese. After you make the base, which like I said, I'm going to show you three different recipes for the base. But after you make the base, you can add in... I just add in as much cheese as I want. And um, so you can add in cheese. And also, um, I know of someone that likes to add in a little bit of ground mustard. Um, whenever they do the cream of cheese or the cheese soup, I don't, um, I just, I just add in the cheese. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of show you this up front because like I wanted to let you know of the different flavors that you can add to make your own flavored cream soup. Okay. So let's get on with showing you three basic cream soup recipes. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is the recipe that makes the most, um, this is the biggest recipe. Okay, um, so this will make about three and a half to four cups of a basic cream soup. Okay, so the first thing that you want is three tablespoons of butter. And you can use, you know, these kind of butter like Blue Bonnet or um, Country Crock or whatever you want, or you can use real butter. Either one will work. Okay, so that's the first thing that you want. And you want to take it over to the stove and um, let it melt. Turn your stove on, of course, and uh, let it melt. Okay, so while the butter is melting, um, waiting nearby, you will need one half cup of flour. 
you will need a quarter teaspoon of pepper, of ground black pepper. You can use less or more, depending on your taste, but uh, we use a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. Um, then you will need three cups of a liquid. You could use three cups of milk or three cups of broth. Um, what I do is I take, I do half milk, so I do a cup and a half of milk and then a cup and a half of broth. But So this one, I went ahead and done the chicken, okay? So I put in some of that chicken uh, bouillon, and so I have the chicken broth and the milk, half and half, making a total of three cups. And then you'll also want a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, um, but I do not put in the salt just yet because the chicken broth, you know, is a little salty on its own. So um, that's just kind of a personal taste. You know, if you want more salt, add it. If not, don't. But, you know, I can always add salt later. Okay, so I added the pepper in it. All right. And you can hear my butter is hot and ready. All right, so now I'm going to add the flour. Okay, so you just add the flour a little bit at a time until it looks like this, and then you slowly uh, pour in your liquid while you whisk quickly. Okay, so I slowly poured my liquid in there while I continually whisked um, the flour mixture into the liquid, and I just have it now on like a medium low, around a medium heat. Um, and if you let it sit for a little bit, you can feel it, you know, thickening up at the bottom. So you just kind of need to keep a, you know, keep stirring it. And it'll cook a little bit and it'll get thicker. Um, so you just kind of have to know what kind of texture you want. If you want it thicker, then let it cook a little bit longer. Um, if you want it more runny, then, you know, don't cook it as long. Um, but anyhow, so I'll show you what it looks like whenever it has thickened up to the consistency that I like. So while I'm waiting for this to continue to cook and thicken up, um, I wanted to say say that if you're going to add any, you know, mushrooms or, you know, your celery or your onions that are rehydrated now, um, now would be the time to do so. Okay. Okay, so this is starting to thicken up. It's still not, you know, thick enough for me yet. Sorry, that's the cable. My phone's charging. <laughs> Anyhow, but yes, this is starting to thicken up. I went ahead and I turned it up to about almost eight. Um, now, like I said earlier, depending on what you're making it for, you know, um, that will help you decide as to how thick or how thin you want it. Um, I will use this recipe once it's thicker for anything that calls for cream of chicken soup, anything at all. Um, if I, I also use this recipe when I am making homemade chicken noodle soup, um, in addition to just the regular, you know, watery broth, um, I will add a, um, a serving, well, a batch of this, a recipe of this to a big pot of chicken noodle soup in order to make it like creamy chicken noodle soup. Um, we really like that. It's good. Okay, so this first recipe is done. Um, it's very hot. <laughs> Just got it out. And after I cooked it a little bit, and it, well, for a while, and it evaporated, it looks like I got about two and a quarter cups of it, which according to this is about, about 15, or sorry, 18 ounces, it looks like. Okay. All right, so that is number one. I probably should say that this particular recipe takes um, a longer cook time in order to get it thicker um, how you would like it. Um, there's This is the biggest recipe. The other ones, the other two I'm going to show you, they only make about the equivalent of one can, which I believe is about 10 ounces, and this is almost twice that. Um, so this one, it does take a, a longer cook time. Um, I personally, um, you can see it kind of has like a yellowish color because of the chicken bouillon that I put in it. I personally like a lot of flavor. So, um, you know, so I tend to add more than recipes normally call for of different things. In our family, we just like a lot of, you know, strong, bold flavors. So, you know, you can add as much or little flavoring of anything that you like to make it to suit your own taste. One more thing I should probably say that I completely forgot, I'm sorry, is um, this 
you can actually freeze this pretty easily. So once it cools, just put it in a freezer container, mark it and date it with what it is, and of course the date, and stick it in the freezer, and you can have it for whenever you need it. Okay, so for this second recipe for basic cream soup, you will need one and one fourth cup of milk, one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, and then, you know, salt and pepper to taste, okay? Um, I usually put in about half a teaspoon of salt and about an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of pepper. That's just my preference. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so what you do with the one and one fourth cup of milk is you put one cup of milk in the pan, and you got to get that hot first, and then the fourth cup that remains, with this, you take the cornstarch, your table, your tablespoon and a half of cornstarch, put it in there, and then put in the salt and pepper as much as you would like, and then, you know, just stir it well, and it's smooth. Okay, so now we've got to take the milk and get it hot and heat it up. Okay, so while I'm waiting for my milk just to boil, you know, slightly, um, you know, to get really good and hot and have all those little bitty bubbles in it for the boiling, um, while I wait for that, I wanted to tell you that right now this is not flavored, you know, this is just very basic and simple. Um, so at this point, if you're wanting to add beef bouillon or chicken bouillon, then you would do so you know, right here in this mixture right now. Um, whenever I make this and I want to make it chicken flavored, then for this recipe, I add half of a teaspoon of chicken bouillon to this mixture right here. Okay, you can see this is starting to get hot and I can feel it kind of on the bottom, you know, cooking. All right, so it is time for me to add the cornstarch. And while I've been waiting, I just before I add it, I just make sure that it's still, you know, together and well incorporated. Okay, so this only took two minutes, you know, to cook and to get to the thickness that I need. See that? It is done. Okay, um, as I was stirring it, I was thinking about supper, and I think um, well, for supper, I'm going to make some beef stroganoff, and I was thinking, um, I'm going to go ahead and add some beef bouillon to this right now, and also to the next recipe that I'm going to make, and then I'll combine the two in the end, and I'm going to put this in with, for my beef stroganoff. Okay, so I went ahead and I added some beef bouillon, um, and I ended up adding one teaspoon of the beef bouillon to this. I just went by taste. I added a quarter of a teaspoon at a time. Okay, so this is ready. Okay, and you can see that it made about not quite 10 ounces. So just a little over eight, maybe like eight and three quarters, almost nine ounces. For this last basic cream soup recipe, it is very, very similar to the last one you saw, to number two. Okay, but instead of using milk, we are going to use one and one fourth cup of broth. Okay, um, I went ahead, since I'm going to be making beef stroganoff tonight, I went ahead and flavored my broth um, with the beef. With the beef. Okay, so you will have one and one fourth cup of broth, then you will have three tablespoons of flour, and then like I said again, um, or earlier, as much salt and pepper as you want. Um, I'm actually not going to put any salt in this because of the broth, and I will wait until later to put in the pepper, you know, to taste, just to see if I want any or not. Okay, but the same principle, you know, it's the same idea. Um, you boil one cup of the broth, put the three tablespoons of flour in the remaining quarter cup of the broth, and then, you know, mix it. Let's see. Okay. All right. So I'm going to 
so then you can get this to focus again. All right, so I have my one cup of the broth in here, which I will heat up like I did with the milk on number two. I'm going to add three tablespoons of flour. Okay, and then I will just whisk this together. You know, and if you want to add salt and pepper or anything else, you can do that here, depending on what it is. Okay, and you just want to whisk it until it's smooth and there are no lumps. All right. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the stove and get it heating up. Okay, so while I wait for that to boil, I just wanted to go ahead and tell you what I was doing at the moment. Um, since I'm making beef stroganoff, I'm going to go ahead and also um, add in some mushrooms. So I opened the can and I took um, a couple of these big spoons of mushrooms out. I'm just going to chop them up kind of small. And then whenever the cream soup is, um, whenever I add in that thick floured mixture, then, and you know, have that all smooth, then I will add these in and I'll pour in a little bit of this juice to taste. Okay, so the broth is boiling and now it is time to put in the flour mixture. Okay, so I put in the flour mixture and I went ahead and turned it off of the burner because um, as soon as that flour mixture hits there, you know, hits the liquid, you've got to stir very, very quick to avoid the clumps. And basically, as soon as you get it mixed, it is thickened up already. Okay, it's, it's very thick. All right, now I'm going to add the mushrooms. Okay, so I added the mushrooms, and I also added a little bit of the mushroom juice that was in the can. And this tastes really good. <laughs> it has a very nice, um, rich flavor. Very, very good. Okay, so that is the end of the recipe for this one. Um, I'm going to show you all three side by side and tell you which one was the easiest for just starting out. Okay, so here are all three recipes I just made, and this one just got done, so it's still a little, you know, jiggly. Okay, so the first one here, you can see that it has, you know, gotten thick from, you know, sitting. <laughs> okay, um, so this one here makes about twice the amount as the recipe two and recipe three. Okay, um, I make, I'm not you know, bias on any one of these recipes. Um, it just, I make whichever one I feel at the moment. Okay, um, but that being said, if you are new to making homemade cream soups and you just want something quick and easy, then I recommend um, the last, one of the last two recipes. They are much, much quicker because this one has to cook, you know, for quite a while for it to get to the thickness that you like. Um, depending on what recipe you are using, like what you're making. You may want it thinner or thicker, but this one takes longer um, before it's ready. These two are ready within just a couple minutes. This one's like pretty instant. Okay, so the first one, you know, takes longer. So if you're just starting out, I recommend number two or number three. Now, these two recipes, they're basically the same thing. The, the amounts of ingredients are the same. Um, you know, like the liquid's the same but they're just kind of reversed. Like this one takes milk and cornstarch. This one is uh, broth and flour. Now you can reverse them. You know, you could use milk and flour if you want. Um, I don't recommend that only because when you make it, it just tastes like a gravy, you know, like, like a biscuits and gravy. Um, that's what it tastes like. I mean, it's good, but anyway, that's just my opinion. So I like doing the milk and cornstarch or the broth and flour together. Okay, with the flour, this one's probably the quickest one because as soon as that flour hits, it's 
you know, it's done within just like seconds, basically. Um, cause that flour, you know, just absorbs so much liquid and it's already thick. Okay. So, um, what I'm making for supper tonight is I'm going to make beef stroganoff and I, while I was making all of this, I was like, now as I'm making these, what am I going to do with these? I guess just freeze them and have them for later. Well, I remember, I remember I'm going to go ahead and just combine these two together and throw that in with the noodles and the beef, of course, season it and, you know, add other things like onions and, you know, whatever else I decide at the moment. Um, but anyway, so that's what I'm going to do with those two. Okay, and I hope that this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, just ask. And thank you for watching.